So that's the outsider. He's kind of this amoral figure. He basically he gives powers to people who he finds interesting. And good or evil doesn't really enter into it. Oh uh, yeah, I was gonna say he doesn't seem like evil. He just seems kind of like a dick. Yeah, he he gives he gives these supernatural powers to people he finds interesting, just kind of to see what'll happen. He he he's just he he screws with human human death. He's screwing with humanity for the lulls, basically. Oh, so he's like that thing from Death Note. I've not read Death. Uh, it's like a. I, well, okay, I know the rough premise. I mostly yeah. just know it from that for that potato chip scene. No, oh, it's the best. Take a potato chip and eat it. Do not attempt to house or care oh. for a friend or family. Talk about symptoms of the disease. You don't go to the flooded district for treatment. You go there to die. If you like, <laughs> no, you do. When you see it, it's a, it's a hellhole. Oh, I know. <laughs> Just like the frankness with which you say it. Spoilers. You don't go to the. You don't go there to get treated. You go there to die. I had a sailor for a boyfriend once. He thought he'd strike gold digging in the Pandisian cliffs. They found his ship drifting empty. Pandisia is this big continent, like I said, near, you know, a ways off from the Isles. It's very mysterious, and there's not many people. There's no, like, major civilizations there. <laughs> and a lot of people who go there don't come back. Other oh, servants don't, don't like her. Don't yeah, like I said, she gets the generic servant lines. Oh, there's Cecilia. She okay, the, again, she gets generic servant lines as well. Which don't... Oh. Master called the the common common woman. Woman. She, she fears the Abbey and the plague. plague. Somewhere in the basements below, Hal kills Hal, and the money changes hands. Lord Pendleton Memoirs, Chapter 27. This is a recurring thing, in his memoirs. In my thirteenth year, the despised hmm. stepmother at last departed. And Pendleton Hall was again quiet, although father had by then sunk into deep depression. It was at this sensitive time that Waverly Boyle first entered my life. She who will be the source of many tender recollections to come. Funny thing is, I know that if I was in this universe, I would totally record stuff, and it'd just be boring. <laughs> Such laughter. And There's, the you're, you're setting yourself up for a very mean-spirited remark about what we're doing right now, Nick. I'd be careful. <laughs> oh God, it's true. But as you can see, the heart tells, shows you where runes are. The Lord Regent has decreed that plague ordinances will remain in effect through the month of rain. Stay alert. And stay loyal. Now, and also, now you've when you've got the heart out, you may notice there's you hear all that eerie wind blowing and noise in the background. Mm. It's like you're like I don't know. It's like it's like you're like kind of. Before the sun rises, they toss many casualties into the river. Men or hound, they all go in. Her servant wages will not be enough to fix her father's death. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I mentioned. Like it doesn't really fit. Like some of the characters really shouldn't have been given the generic lines, because they don't really fit them. Admiral mm -hmm. Let's Admiral learn about the Admiral now. Uh-oh. He has the bloodlust. He tried to seize control of the military after the Empress. After she... The Empress was murdered. Now that's an interesting little. Look at him, Admiral Havelock grows restless on land. Hmm. Notice, that, notice that little odd little thing about the Empress. And an artist, <coughs> sensitive, soft, taken at nine by a fever. Havelock loved him truly. Admiral Havelock. Also, the Empress and the Heart, well, same voice actress. Together. All I'm saying. First off, I know that assassination is dark business, but sometimes good men have to do bad things. 
Yeah, he's got a wheel lock Our pistol on his chest. It must oh, yeah. be a wheel, want to wheel lock pistol. By finding and putting Emily Caldwin on the throne. To those ends, we'll you, you've got me I'm now sure. imagining Take like some apart. people in the Peace future just Peace. like dreading Tonight, through YouTube and finding our <laughs> LP. It won't just be, be like, what the fuck are these guys doing? <laughs> An army of religious zealots. But I can't believe can do it, people had the free time to do this once. Are legendary. Campbell carries a private journal. Once right. you've eliminated him, get the journal. Because we think it contains Emily's location. Recovering her is obviously critical, assuming she's alive. That's the gist of it. Remember our cause and strike true. We're counting on you. Yes, we're going after High Overseer Campbell. Look, it's the button. You know... Campbell is holding a former overseer by the name of Martin. Martin. He's one of us. And if you manage to find him, give him whatever help you can. He's a master strategist, and he got caught working for our cause. Hmm. It'd be good to have him back here at the Hell Pits. I, I don't think this is actually what... Ooh, the exquisite tall boy. Excerpt from a letter of public concern by anonymous authors. What you've read here is the truth, regardless of what you'll hear from the authorities who rule over us. It is not a matter of coincidence that the former royal spy master is the one who stepped in when the late empress fell. We, who will remain nameless, believe that these events are interconnected. The signs of oppression are all around us. The Sokolov designs, originally intended to provide light and warmth in our homes, have been turned against us as a means of inspiring fear and controlling our movements through the city. And where did this plague originate? Some say it was imported. A wild theory? Perhaps. One of our members risked her life to obtain an internal report from the government, which we will be printing and sharing soon, called The Exquisite Tall Boy, stilling the virtues of this newest member of the City Watch. To those in the streets below, these virtues are horrors, spread by stilted thugs who rain down fire on the sick and the poor. To these eyes, the tall boy is another government bully, armed with incendiary devices, thickly armored and standing high overhead, looking down at the common people of the city. We n now know that the tall boys are heavily drugged, imbibing a substance that renders them resistant to pain, but also dulls whatever empathy they might normally possess. Exquisite? We think not. So yeah, those... Those guys on stilts, they're... Me Copy these words and share them with your neighbors. And remember, when the tides are lowest, the truth will be revealed. Yeah, so those guys on stilts are... They're trouble. They don't just want to try out for the circus. Nope. Yeah, so, bas so basically, you're going after High Overseer Campbell. Oh, Corvo? Oh. Give you a moment. Ooh, here's some someone else we're gonna... Corvo. Corvo. Hello. I'm Callista. I work here for Admiral Havelock. I'm sorry to intrude on your business, but this is important. I suspect you're going to kill the High Overseer. That wretched man. There's really no reason for you to listen to me. But my uncle, Jeff Kernow, still serves as captain in the City Watch. But he's a good man, and my only family. The chatter and service so that to kill Campbell him. just took delivery of an exotic poison. And I think I know why. Oh. My uncle's not corruptible like the rest of them. Campbell is going to poison my uncle. Do you think you God, it's been a while since I played this. You used to do that, right? Before you had your current profession. Before you became an assassin. You haven't really even done any assassinating yet, technically. Alright, now, that is... That she is is her now. Okay, she actually gets her own lines. Was that... Callista Kurnow. Her uncle, the last of the Kurnow family. She dreams of freedom, and then the decks of whaling ships fast after the beasts of the sea. But alas, she is a woman. Such sadness. She is Callista Kurnow. Okay. She has learned to defend herself in this treacherous city. Oh, there's an audiograph there. Let's have a look upstairs. Yoink. They top off the line with river water, but eventually someone swoons, and the fresh bottles are fetched from cells. Each and every night, the black-eyed outsider visits upon Piero's dreams. Uh-oh. Mm. He is Piero Joplin. Even now, he visualizes the next adventure. Astonishing. I wish you could see it, too. Poor Piero. 
His elixirs have cured so much for so many, but they cannot cure his great fears. The youngest ever to pass through the Academy of Natural Sciences. So God will never forgive him that. He has spied upon Callista as she bathes more than once. Yeah. Each and every night for the last Okay, so am I seeing that button wrong or can you totally murder him? Apparently you can. There are certain things you can do where like you get like a, a sort of a non standard game over. Because, you know it Like in, in the open in the whole opening sequence, you can actually get a game over you can just attack one of the people before you meet the Empress. You can just attack someone for no reason and you get a game over saying that Corvo was arrested. <laughs> But okay, that Callista was voiced by Lena Headey, who's um, played, among others, played uh, Cersei Lannister on Game of Thrones. Right. Uh, she was Queen Gorgo in Three Hundred, and most importantly, she was Mama in Dread. <laughs> most importantly. Well, most importantly to me, to people who have taste. <laughs> 